Hello and welcome back to Automotive Tales. On today's episode, we are sadly saying goodbye to Pastor Picasso, but we are leaving our mark. As you can see, we've got our Automotive Tales sticker on here, uh, along with all the other people that have spent time with the car. Um, so yeah, sadly, it is going on a trailer. It's going back to Ashley today. Um, but that's not the only thing we're doing with the trailer today. So while we're sadly departing with Pass, uh, we are going to follow up on an earlier video uh, with the Porsche 986, 968, 986, the Boxster, um, that is now going to its new home. And hopefully if we get time with the transport, we're gonna move a few other things as well. Into, um, yeah, HQ 2.0, which still hasn't got doors on it. Mm. So quick update actually on the garage. So uh, as you're about to see, we have now got the extra concrete in on the floor ready for the door frames to go in. I I'm hopeful now they're gonna come next week. I have been saying that for about two months. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're very soon gonna have doors on here, which is good because there are a number of cars to put into here, including the BMW Cabriolet you've just seen a video on. So I'm hoping the doors are gonna be in before that arrives because I want that to be tucked away and nice and safe so that the neighbor's cat doesn't sit on the bloody roof. So what the arrival of the Cabriolet does mean is I've got to rehome all of this, which is a small problem. However, I have now got all my workshop built as much as I need to start storing stuff. So uh, the aim for today is also, while the cars are in transport, spend a bit of time here clearing a bit of this, and I have got some help on the way. So that rattly noise you can hear is the Diesley Weasley of Pass. Uh, so I'm in Pass for probably the last time, just getting her out, ready to go on the trailer when Neil arrives in about half an hour. Um, and just looking at some of the goodies that I'm gonna leave in the car. So we uh, we filled it with the proper French Total oil uh, and look what I found in the drawer at home. Uh, a Total freebie of little uh, highlighters, which I thought were kind of cool. Um, maybe, um, yeah. Try that again, shall we? Uh, what I was gonna say is that Ashley might be able to use the green one for crossing off the things on the MOT fail list, which is another thing I'm also leaving in the car. Um, Yes, this is the fail list. Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, while we're on the subject of, uh, of things in past, so there was a load of stuff already with the car when I got it. It's got this cool Citroen little basket in the back which clicks in, which is pretty awesome. Although uh, I discovered fairly recently, obviously, uh, you can't leave that in for the MOT. That has to be out of the vehicle because they're not allowed to remove things from your vehicle, but they have to be able to check the boot floor. I didn't think that was the case. I thought they had to check the spare wheel, which, well, is down over here somewhere um he's under the car not in the boot but apparently you no know, they have to check the boot floor as well so you can't leave that in the car even though it's a factory fit with this little clip up here um, but in there is loads of oil um there's a little recovery torch which i've added which is a sort of period correct um there's the other half of the sill which apparently uh ash is now going to need um there is a new steering wheel so i hadn't had time to fit this um because i'm too busy dealing with the other problems i had with it um, but there is a slightly less sticky steering wheel here that somebody could maybe have recovered uh, in leather and then it could be swapped out so the pass isn't off the road any longer. Um, but what I think is the coolest thing that I'm going to leave in pass is a period correct Citroen rally jacket. Um, so it's got the right type of uh, Citroen logo on the back. It's even got the Total oils on the side. Um, so yeah, hopefully that's a nice little gift for Ashley when it arrives. So the last little bit to get out of the car is this little camera stand here. So it sort of sits between the seats it's based on the, the headrests here. Uh, that doesn't stay with uh, Picasso, sadly, because uh, despite it being very useful, it is mine. And I'm going to use this when the Cabriolet comes back. But I am super sad to see this little car go. I've just started and driven it over here, ready for the uh, trailer. And it just, it drives so nicely. It's ridiculous for its miles. Bloody MOTs, it's... So structural rigidity is massively overrated. Safety is overrated. Just let me drive this car. It's so cool, which is ridiculous. Like it's a Citroen Zara Picasso, but it's properly charming. I love this little thing. Um, Ashley, if you get it fixed, can I drive it one last time, like on the roads properly? Um, because yeah, it's just something really comfortable. Like I'm sitting here in the the captain's chairs at the front with the armrest down, and it's really comfy. <sighs> I'm so sad that I wasn't able to fix it. Anywho, there's plenty of other cars coming that I'm going to have to probably do work on. And I still haven't had an update on the Bentley Turbo R. 
Um, and the Fiat still hasn't been delivered, even though we've paid for the storage. So I've got my own problems to worry about. But yeah, I'm very, very sad about seeing the end of... Uh, or Not the end of Picasso, the back of Picasso. Picasso? Pass. Pass. She has a name. Her name is Pass. Not Picasso. That's Pablo. Realised I left one other surprise. Because it's a road trip car, you have to have boiled sweets for a road trip car. This is it. Pass is getting ready to go. Uh, you can see what the uh, MOT test has found. Uh, there's quite a lot more going on down here. This is not pretty. So, yeah, not ideal. Pass has gone and we are off to do some archaeology. So next trip is to get from HQ 1.0. Hi, Greg. Here's my, uh, my help, by the way, I mentioned earlier. Um, we're going back to HQ 1.0 and we've got to get a Boxster out. So I've got my Boxster recovery system. I've got a compressor uh, ready to go in the car for pumping the tyres up. And I've got these little cutters, where are they here? Um, because, well, we're going to have to unbury the Boxster. So, um, right, archaeology time. Off we go. Let's go. Yep, yep. Then. Have compressor, we'll travel, right? Right here, we have made it to HQ 1.0 and the sun has come out, which is lovely, even though I've still got my beanie hat on. Um, so here she is, HEZ 9605, the Boxster. So as you can see, we've got a few bits to cut away from the front, although the, wa the weeds have all been whacked out here, so it's, uh, it's not too hard to get at it. Uh, and then we're going to plug the compressor in, pump the tyres up and see if it'll roll. Well, uh, project putting air in the tyres went quite successfully. We have all four tyres inflated with my favourite type of Boxster wheel. I love these. Uh, these Pirellis are absolutely knackered because, well, they've started to perish and they've gone flat on the bottom. Uh, and so they're probably not ever safe to drive on again. I have got another set of Boxster wheels for this, which I might give to the new owner um, because I quite like to keep these wheels. Um, these are my favourite style of Boxster wheels. They're similar to the 911 lightweight wheels. Um, but yeah, so uh, that means you won't have to buy four new tyres as well, hopefully, because the other ones have got good tyres on. Uh, right, so I need to fight through the cobwebs and take the handbrake off because some idiot left the handbrake on. That's a really bad idea. Um, so probably the back end is seized and then we've got to try and get it out of its hole. Um, but yeah, it's nice to actually see it without a cover on for the first time in, well, uh, seven, eight years. Well, I set the time lapse for moving it and that was... Well, that was a little bit too easy. Where's he gone? This one over here. I can't do that, like this thing pointing in the background. I can't get it right. It's always wrong around. Um, this one over here decided that if you bounce the suspension at the back, it moved the wheel enough and it broke it free. So it's rolled straight out. Um, the only problem is the towing arm of the box is at the back and the wagon is going to come down that road up there. So we've now got to do a three-point turn with a car that's got no battery and doesn't work. So just hunting around inside and found a bit of the history. So it's actually only done 61,000 miles. Uh, it last had its MOT in 2019. It broke down on the way home, nailing tire offside rear. So that's probably why the tires were flat and it's got an anti-roll bar link that he's looking at. It's probably got a lot worse while it's been sat here. But yeah, it's been sat here for, well, 2019. It's been sat here for five years. Wow. Hey, look, found a missing 10 mil spanner from my tool set. So I'd left it under here to obviously disconnect and reconnect the terminals, but I have discovered it's still got the tool kit. Tucked away in here is a little 10 and a 13 mil combination spanner. So that's slightly annoying. And this little thing, which I believe is for locating the wheel. So you screw it into the hole and then you can locate the wheel which, if I'd known was in here, would have been really useful when we broke down in front. Hmm, lovely. 
I really should have brought my sunglasses. We've actually got some sunny weather. So while we're waiting for the transport to arrive for the Boxster, we have wheeled the 944 out. So I'm not giving this one away before you get any ideas, but it is going up for sale. So it's a 2.7 944. Uh, it's a facelift, so it's got an oval dash rather than the old round binnacles. Uh, it's a quite a lot done to it, but it does need some rust work. There's a video I'll stick up here somewhere for you uh, to tell you all about that. But uh, yeah, it's out. It's taking a bit of a push. It hasn't rolled as easily as the Boxster, despite being you know, in a proper garage and only having been there for a, about half the amount of time. But, uh, it seems to be a thing with Porsches. Uh, things go wrong, they get expensive, they get laid up. The man himself is here, fresh from dropping off Picasso. It's Neil. Now, next job is to get that damn Boxster on. Blows. Actually, don't look too bad in the, the light of day. Apart from the grass hanging out underneath. So we've had to make a pit stop with the wagon, which we was following us into HQ 2.0, um, because there's a glitch in the matrix. So last time I drove that car, it broke down on the A6. The wagon just conked out on the A6 at exactly the same spot on the same direction of the carriageway as the Boxster last broke down when I last drove it. Uh, we think it's probably because the wagon was on a slope when we were loading the car and it's probably got a bit of air in the fuel system. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, not not ideal. But it seems to be running now. So um, fingers crossed, we've only a couple of miles to go now till we get to HQ 2.0. And we deliver this to my neighbour, who is the one that is taking on the the brokester the broken boxster bro, brokster yeah it's about so the boxster has found its new home joe what do you think of your boxster <laughs> Indeed it does. Right, so it's a Porsche pushing kind of day. So next job is for me to get in the wagon and we're going to go back and pick up the 944 and leave Joe to clean his new Boxster. Uh, right, have fun. Watch out for the spiders. More Porsche pushing next time as we get the 944 home and also the Volvo T5R. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Look what we found. Ta -da! On 944. Right, next stop, HQ 2.0.